Hey everyone, my name is Nat. Welcome to my backyard. So a very common question I get has to do with log sizes and kind of determining at what point a log isn't really worth being sawn into lumber. Now the answer to that question is it depends and it's really going to depend on what you're looking to do. If you're having some fun, you just want to cut up some stuff just for fun and maybe you want to cut something that has high sentimental value or is a species that you don't normally find at the store, then that bar is probably pretty low. But until you see how little lumber you can make from a small log, you don't really appreciate like <laughs> the commitment of trying to turn something small into usable material. Now there is going to be another question of the stability of that wood and we'll talk more about that later on. First off, I want to do a little demo of trying to get some lumber out of some small logs. So my buddy Donovan, he hooked me up with some small logs that I can use for this demonstration. I'll leave a link to his channel down below. This was, uh, let's call it a sentimental tree from a family member and they want to be able to use it for something. So uh, this kind of worked out pretty well. I have some stuff that I normally would not even consider even messing with and they can get some material from a tree that was a big part of their lives. So I am going to be attempting to make edge lumber out of this and uh, I think this first piece is going to be the one that just wants to be a slab because it is a little too goofy. Now one of the uh, side effects of this demonstration is it should also demonstrate why uh, curvy logs don't make good uh, saw logs for traditional edge lumber. Uh, so this first one here is a huge, a massive! Eight inches in diameter. <laughs> this is so tiny. <laughs> so you can see there is a felling split in here. So when it was felled, it uh, it split. Just how it happened. So as you can see at this point, we have a bend down here and then it drops off this way. And if you look at it from the top, it's going like this. So in theory, if you really want to make actual edged lumber, uh, something like this, you would have to cut it right around here or move this massive bend here you would have a saw log and then another saw log. That's just uh, way too short for me to really mess with at this point. The other ones will cut to be more saw log-ish, but at this point I think this one's gonna be in here like this and we're gonna try and cut it as it sits. I'm gonna try and position the saw so I come in parallel to that split and hopefully I can remove a lot of it and salvage uh, some of the material that's there still. I'll tell you this much, Little logs make for easy sawing, at least. So this is our waste piece. Looks pretty cool, at least. So I think for this, what I'll do is prep each log individually, and then I can stack them all in the bed and cut all the boards out of them all at once at the end. Since this is going to be slabs, this guy's ready to go. All the other ones that become boards, I will score up on three sides. Ugh. So I'll set this guy aside for now. And we can take a look at our next big log. <laughs> this is seven inches in diameter. This boy is a big boy. <laughs> so as we look at this thing, it's kind of laying there on the bed. We can see this is uh, not really gonna yield anything if we cut it as is. So we need to cut it up into some uh, different lengths for uh, our saw logs. So if we take a look at the log in this plane, it's pretty straight and then it just kind of goes like that down at that end. So that needs to come off. And then if you look at it in this plane, you can see it's pretty flat through here, but then it goes whoop up in the air. <laughs> so this log is going to require two cuts. We're going to make one cut right here to remove this kind of weird jaunt thing. And then one cut over here to straighten out this end. So we'll have one basically four foot long saw log and then two of these little like two footers. So I'm going to grab the chainsaw and make those cuts real quick and then start squaring up uh, these uh, huge logs into cans. <laughs> can't <laughs> like three boards in there yeah not bad set this guy aside and we'll cut those two short ones now <laughs> I think my general rule of if something's uh, 
big enough to be worth it, is if I can lift it, it's probably too small to be worth it. If you can throw the cant, it's too small. <laughs> So since this one has a curve in it, I'm just trying to eyeball getting it even so that it uh, gives us the most amount of yield, <laughs> which this is not going to give us much yield anyway. But I'm just going to pick up this end a little bit, put a shim underneath it. It's just a scrap piece of wood and I can clamp it against the side stops here. I'll make that the uh, edging cut. Another cant ready to go. Let's see what's next. There, this looks like a good size. Oh, another goofy one. Wonderful. All right, so this one's got a crotch section still attached down there. And as you can see, after the crotch, it bends up and away. So on this one, I'm gonna come in here and cut right above the crotch section. That'll give us this as a massive saw log. <laughs> Uh, six inches in diameter, and then we'll have a little crotch section down here, which is a little bit bigger. This is, this is eight, a huge eight inch splice to about a uh, 10 inch crotch up here. <laughs> so one quick cut and then uh, back to uh, squaring things up. Well, sort of squaring things up. Three sided square up. Uh, with these things being so light, it makes you feel super powerful being able to throw them around like they're nothing. This is going to be too short. <laughs> My bunks are two feet apart, so I can cut small stuff, but this might be too small for this without an auxiliary bed. Yep, I'll be right back. When things are a little precarious like that, you have to go pretty slow with the feed to keep the cut forces down a little bit. There you are. <laughs> I thought the camera was over there. Because uh, basically the cut forces have all this torque on this log, so it ends up trying to roll it that way, especially with this blocking being so low here. So going slow, keeping that cut force down helps to keep this thing from either vibrating or you know completely rolling out of its cradle. So I think I'll do is give you a little look at the next three logs and just show you how crazy they are. And I'll just cut them all up at once into their actual saw log lengths. So this one, of course, has got this bend in here. That's going to be an easy one. Just come up here and chop this piece off here. That might be too short to really mess with, but at least we'll have, <laughs> that's like, I don't know, 30 inches long. A little tiny log there. It's fairly straight. Same kind of deal here. We have up until this crotch. And this thing starts going off sideways, so this is going to get clipped right there. But it also has another bend at this kind of baby crotch right over here. So instead of trying to cut this all as one long length, that's going to be one log and then another log there, which is going to be super, super bendy and goofy. So this last one here is going to be pretty easy as well. It is bent, so I don't know if that's really going to yield 
an actual board out of there. That bed might be too great of a curve to actually get a straight piece out of it, but uh, we'll see. Otherwise, I'll just trim it down there, cut it here at the crotch, and then we'll have this little tiny piece up in here. So I'm gonna grab the chainsaw, get these cut, and then start putting them on the saw. All right, let's bump the sketch factor up a little bit and cut more than one at once. Normally this is not a big deal with the logs that I usually cut because they're bigger and they have a little more of that gravity to them. So they don't tend to move around on their own a whole lot, but these are a little squirmy. <laughs> so it might be kind of a, a different story. Two more cans in the pile. <laughs> oh man. I think these are all gonna be a little too goofy to do multiple. So it's back to one at a time. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Look how small this thing is. Oh, I forgot to get a measurement for you guys. Five and a half. It's a big boy. <laughs> In the pile. <laughs> nice. In the pile. <laughs> uh, this is too small. He's just gonna make it. Okay, this is gonna be the last uh, little log we do it here on the sawmill. It's uh, everything else is all too goofy and needed just too short to really clamp and pull in position. I think that's probably the biggest issue with the small log stuff is that they're so small that it's just hard to hold onto them in like a sawmill context. When you get down to this size, uh, sawing stuff in the shop is probably the, uh, honestly, the easier way to go. So I have a few logs left over. So after we cut up everything out here, we can head into the shop and I'll show you how to cut up these other small stuff on the uh, indoor bandsaw. Because that's probably a little more practical for most people that are actually questioning whether or not they want to saw logs this small. Probably not a sawmill, but you probably have a bandsaw in your shop. Look at that baby thing. We're gonna get some, uh, is it like a four inch wide board out of there. It's gonna be nice. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna get all the, uh, the cans that we cut that are in the pile right now, set up on the bed of the mill, and it's time to slice up our boards. So now with all these set up and ready to be cut, I can use the lumber scale on here to actually make all these individual cuts. So this is a four quarter scale. So each number on here is a board that's an inch and a thick. I'm gonna do basically skinny six quarter. So I'm gonna go uh, one and a half markings on here. That won't be exactly six quarter, but since this is all consistent, it's not gonna matter a whole lot. So I'll come down, make a cut, remove the waste, and then uh, just make all the cuts all the way down to the bed. And now we'll leave us with a stack of boards and we'll have some wood. Let's see how I did with this one with the crack in it. 
Yeah, got some of it out. That one's got a <laughs> pretty well got the uh, the crack contained in that board. So that one's yep. <laughs> then we got uh, one decent board out of there. So I guess slab or whatever. Since I had to use my little straddle board thing here, I've got a thin piece of that crotch. This is a three quarter inch board. And then the rest are gonna be at six quarters. So I got three full pieces out of that. This one's got a little bit of wane still. But there's uh, one board, one good board, I guess. This guy, we've got three pretty solid looking boards. Same thing back here. Three solid looking boards. These are six and a half inches wide by 29 inches long. So yeah, I guess it's something. Put those in the pile, I guess. <sighs> Waste piece here. Two pieces from this guy. It's got a short section, which is usable, so I guess we'll count that as a usable piece. Otherwise, we got two. Oh, they're not. What do I do with this? I guess I cut this wrong? Or only. I must have only squared up two sides of this one. I wasn't paying attention. So that one's got one live edge, <laughs> which is fine, I guess. That's a piece of waste. That's a piece of waste. Two boards. These are a little bit narrower, four and a half inches wide. Three sizable boards. What we got here? Six and change by, woo, 44. <laughs> That's a hard fought, uh, what was that? Three board feet? <laughs> This one's got a good amount of wane still. Another board kind of like those last ones. Now granted I still have this log to cut and this log, and I guess I could try and cut this, but we'll do that in a second. Out of everything we've cut so far here in the sawmill, here's our stack of actual finished pieces of wood. So we have a stack that's uh, a few feet wide, maybe two. The bunks are two feet apart, so it's about maybe two and a half feet wide maybe three feet long and about a foot tall. So not a, really a whole lot. And I've been out here for a bit over two hours already. So as far as like yield for your time goes, not a whole lot, but you can get, you know, some decently usable material out of some pretty small logs if you want to spend the time doing it. So these look a little bit bigger in the shop, although they still don't look huge by any means. So I'm going to start off with this guy here. This is going to become a decent section here to make actual boards out of. This guy is way too curvy. I might just try and cut some slabs as a demonstration out of that guy on the bandsaw. Before I get started, I do want to chop off this thing. So let's uh, head over to the bandsaw and do that. One thing you want to be careful of as you're coming across a log on a bandsaw is the fact that the cut force is pulling this thing down, creating a rotational effect. So if you are coming through here trying to cut off like a cookie, or in this case, this limb. You gotta be very careful to stay in control of the cut because it could roll into the blade catch and then uh, well, hopefully your saw is underpowered and jams it up. Otherwise, it's going to uh, throw something at you or pull you into the saw. Now the process in here is gonna be very similar to the process out there. We need to first set this thing up to be kind of squared off, especially since we're gonna be hand feeding this thing through the saw. We don't want this thing rolling around on us. So to make that first cut, to make a nice flat face, we need some way to stabilize this thing. So what I've used in the past is a tall auxiliary fence. Just screw that to the log and push that through as one unit. That'll make the uh, outside face nice and flat. I uh, threw that thing away a long time ago because I never used it. So uh, here's another way to do that. This is just a block of wood. It's going to be a carrier. It essentially just stabilizes it so it can't rock around. So with this, a couple of screws in here, and then we can head over to the bandsaw and make that nice long facing cut to establish one flat face. OK, 
Okay, now I can flip the newly cut flat side down and find a good way to get some screws in here again. Okay, so now with two square sides, it just becomes a matter of a simple resawing type job. So like this, we can go back to the bandsaw, set the fence to whatever thickness board we want, and then go ahead and make all the cuts to produce all the boards. And the last thing on the list, once all those boards are cut, is going to be the edge of them, so you can adjust the fence width to get whatever yield you want out of that, uh, out of that board. Okay, so two boards out of that log, that's uh, not too bad. I think I'm just gonna leave this one because it's a little bit goofy to cut, but if you want to use this method for cutting slabs, all you would need is this little, uh, what we're calling this little guide board thing or some kind of auxiliary fence or something that you can screw this thing to and then just slice all your boards out of. Ideally, you would want this thing to be longer than the length of the thing you're trying to cut so you have a little bit of in-feed and out-feed support as you're going through there, but the process would be just the same as that first cut, just repeated. Make that first cut with the fence and keep going and just make sure you don't hit your screws as you're getting closer to the end of the cut. So this little auxiliary board thing is uh, one way to do this. I personally favor a more uh, quick and dirty way of squaring up these logs if I'm going to solve them in the shop, and it's because I have a jointer. A jointer is a great way to quickly square up things, including logs. <laughs> Now I know some of you seeing this are probably going to be like, oh no, you're going to, you know, dull your knives or whatever. So if you debark your logs and you clean them, that shouldn't be a huge deal. But remember, you are cutting these things with your bandsaw, so if you're not already cleaning your logs, you're just going to be dulling your bandsaw, not your jointer knives. So it just kind of depends on where you really care about things. I've got carbide knives on the jointer, and I don't really care a whole lot. Tools are made to be used. And dulling them is just part of the process of actually using your tools to get things done. <laughs> so I have this little tiny thing that I cut off of that first log. And then uh, I think I'm going to grab that little tiny stick thing out in the yard just to show you uh, how little lumber you can get out of something that's like uh, three inches in diameter. So there we go. I got a couple of boards out of that little tiny log. These are one inch thick, about three and a quarter wide, and maybe like three feet long, something like that. So there's still material in that tiny little log, although not a whole lot. But in the grand scheme of things, this was pretty quick to get these two boards out of this log in the shop. This would be a lot harder to do on the bandsaw mill because it's so small and hard, like hard to hold. So lastly, let's talk a little bit about stability and uh, what to expect there. So first off, you're going to see a lot more inherent cupping with uh, boards from smaller trees. That just happens to be... Uh, part of the uh, the process because the growth rings are going to be much more exaggerated. So you're going to have a much greater curvature to them. You're going to see a lot more cupping. So this is a piece of mulberry that I cut ooh, like eight years ago. It's from a small tree. It's uh, I mean it's still perfectly usable, but you're going to see a lot more inherent cupping out of a board out of a small diameter tree or small diameter log. And secondly, as things pertain to stability, is the fact that if you're cutting small logs, there's a very low likelihood that that log came from the main section of a tree. If you're cutting small stuff, it was probably part of the branch or upper canopy of the tree, which inherently has a lot more stress in it. As you can see from this branch, for example, there is a lot of cantilever stress on this wood. And if this was sawn into lumber, it is very likely that it will distort greatly when it's drying and it will continue to distort as it's being cut and made into things. So just keep that in mind. If you keep a uh, realistic expectation of what you're gonna have for cutting limb wood, uh, then it's all right. But if you expect that you're gonna have boards that are gonna stay perfectly flat and be these big panels that you can do for large pieces of furniture, uh, you're not. <laughs> but if you wanna make you know, smaller things, you wanna cut these things up into cutting board blanks, things like that, it's not gonna be uh, that big of an issue, but if you're trying to make furniture out of limb wood, it's just not going to go well for you. So that brings us back to our pile of wood here. If you haven't uh, put it together yet, a lot of this tree or a lot of these logs, a lot of these logs that I cut are actually limb wood. The only kind of straight grain or straight piece is going to be this guy down here that has a split. That was the main trunk of the tree. The rest is all weird limbs and things. So I expect a lot of the stuff to distort as it's drying. But 
it's a uh, sedimental wood so it's all it's all good in the hood <laughs> so one little reminder if you do try this bandsaw your own wood in the shop out of logs thing make sure you clean up the sawdust and you don't leave these blocks of wood sitting on your bandsaw table this stuff is loaded with moisture if you leave it there and you come back the next day you'll probably have a rusty bandsaw table to have to deal with so you know you know i did that before right <laughs> So that is going to do it for this one. Hopefully a visual representation have uh, helped to answer your questions on is cutting a tiny little log really worth it? Are you going to get the yield that you really want out of it? And only you can decide. I can just show you what to expect. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on cutting tiny little logs, anything about the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time. <laughs> Hack woodworking.